So the next thing we'll do is the wheel hub. And we'll start by putting some axle grease in there. And then slide it onto the spline. the bolt holes as such. Now, as we turn the wheel, these bolts come in from the back, so we want to try and get as straightforward access to this as possible. Line this up. other one at least for the purpose of putting it in by hand from this angle. If you wouldn't mind. Then each of these bolts is going to get torqued to 123 foot-pounds. the remaining two to 123. And that does it for the wheel hub. Alright, so on the outer tire rod end, you put a socket on the top of the bolt and put a wrench on the, uh, the nut, and then you torque it down to 60 foot pounds. Turning it counterclockwise. Yes, yeah. we're spinning the inside. Yep, turning it, yep. It's good. Now we'll torque the lower shock bolt. Goes to 80 pounds. Now we'll torque the upper bolt for the shock absorber. If you're lucky, like we got lucky this time, they'll actually be flats on the shaft so that you can put a wrench on there. Uh, on the other side, there was no flats, and we had to use a vice grip, which did work, because you only have to torque it to 19 pounds, not a lot of force. You see those bushings crushed down nice and even. 
And there you go. Now we'll torque down the upper control arm ball joint. Right? That's correct, 60 foot pounds. And there we go. And then finally, we'll install the cotter pin for that piece. And then just got to bend over the ends. And that one's good to go. All right, now the lower control arm uh, ball joint gets tightened to 135 pounds. And then once you've got the castle nut and the pin lined up, go ahead and put the cotter pin in. And that'll be it for that one. So hey, guess what? We are going to put on the rotor. And then once the rotor's on, we'll put on the brake caliper. <coughs> snugged the caliper pins down. Turn this. There's one here and one here. And we'll go ahead and torque those to 22 foot pounds. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Seventeen. Eighteen. Twenty. Awesome.